How's it going, listeners and subscribers? So today, what I decided to do, I decided to create or at least composite a 5G uh, artificial intelligence trilogy, right? Uh, I picked three of my videos that I created that was probably the most informative about cell phone towers and 5G and put them together in one video so you guys can watch those. And that's what I'm doing here, hoping that you'll enjoy it. Now, this was the old format when I had more outline and scripted videos and my equipment wasn't upgraded. It is now. I was using a secondhand beat up laptop and I had to record my audio on a separate device on my wife's Mac just to uh, create any audio and then overlay that with the relevant visuals and imagery so it's quite cumbersome and that was the old format so you will notice a difference between the previous content and the content I'm currently creating uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it nonetheless you know take the good spit out the bad I always you know give my uh, listeners and subscribers that advice you know chew the meat spit out the bones but uh, let's go ahead and get into it as if he wasn't already, Big Brother is targeting sites that conflict with the narrative of the standard model. If you're conveying information that contradicts the establishment's definition of factual content, to them, you're part of the dissent. It's as if facts are only facts if they fall in line with the commonly accepted threads of this consensus reality. Sometimes, we just don't see things for what they are. This includes the introduction of 5G. Now, 5G hits home for me, as the name suggests I'm from California with some of my roots in the Sacramento Valley. In one of my first episodes, I talked about how Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg mentioned in passing that Sacramento was going to be one of the initial staging areas for the 5G network. Full disclosure, 5G is not about faster internet or wireless service, it's about an invisible prison for the minds of the masses, and these are the bars. As the wide variety of devices designed to keep one enthralled continue to develop, at the same time, so do the technologies associated with those devices that are aimed at monitoring and controlling the user. Not solely by captivating their minds and imaginations with an array of enchanting applications, but by entrancing a targeted area via radio waves and frequency manipulation. Vibration, frequency, and energy govern virtually everything, even the brain produces measurable frequencies. One example is the various phases of frequency shifts that occurs when falling asleep, meditating, or praying. However, Dr. Masaru Emoto found something very interesting after he conducted an experiment with water. He observed its composition after being frozen following the exposure of both positive and negative stimuli. Dr. Emoto noticed that the shape of frozen water crystal formations took on distinct characteristics based on the water's exposure to music and words of thanks and appreciation versus music and words of distaste and vitriol. The double slit experiment is another loose example that demonstrates the subtle effect of energy. In the case of the double slit experiment, simple observation of an object, in this instance an electron and its interference pattern, has a sort of quantum effect on it. What I'm getting at is that the frequency or energy of our thoughts can be projected outward enough to both be measured and cause a subtle influence on the reality around us. The question is, can the reverse be true? Could external factors like frequency and directed energy be projected inward enough to cause subtle influences on the brain? By now, you've probably heard MK Ultra spoken about ad nauseum across many platforms, so I won't get deep into it now, but an argument I happen to agree with is this. One of the overlooked aspects of MKUltra was the use of radar that put monkeys to sleep, proving an artificially induced altered state of consciousness can be achieved by directing energy at the brain. It leads one to wonder, besides the very real likelihood the Charlottesville and Berkeley protests were sponsored by a network of scandalous elite, is it also possible that suitable frequencies which stimulate aggression were generated in the area to instigate or even prompt an adversarial response? I know with the divide and conquer tactic working like a charm, additional measures to segregate hardly seem necessary to facilitate civil unrest, but like the George Soros funded activists in movements like Black Lives Matter and likely within the white supremacist movement, we see the active push to put enmity between citizens. That in conjunction with the divide between civilians and law enforcement the media mantra propounds and attempts to ignite a race war by insert group here has the public in a malleable state of mind. I would argue these frequency apparatus are being used to exploit that malleability as TVs, tablets, phones, you name it, remain our safety net to guide us away from pertinent issues and owe to the effectiveness of the mechanisms in place.
It's relatively easy to see how a platform for virtually every personality type exists and how those platforms are continually adapted to keep one enticed. Easy, that is, if you're able to recognize that a lot of what makes up pop culture is geared towards man's lower nature. Sex sells, right? Or what about scarcity-based mind control, the explicit targeting of the consumer's fear of missing out? This is 5G, bringing your food faster, your rides faster, your sex, your gadgets, and everyday items countless ways to keep you comfortable, subservient, and mindlessly self-deceived. They've managed to develop the technology to influence the masses by subtle manipulation of energies and frequencies. Maybe this is why it's been business as usual while a 16-year war is being waged with what seems like no end in sight. Again, 5G is not just an upgrade. Yes, they require the proper infrastructure to support outlets that sustain our psychological captivity, but also to expand efforts akin to the story I touched on in the beginning. It's about censorship, it's about defining truth, and it's about control. Let's just recall where the internet came from, CERN, DARPA, the military-industrial complex. Perhaps its initial genesis somehow precluded utilization as a tool for mental enslavement, however, not much goes underutilized by the hidden hand. Twenty, maybe thirty years from now, you can expect to see the accumulative adverse health effects of these towers and devices, however, you're already witnessing the more immediate psychological effects. The walking disengaged. It's not coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's here. This next one is going to be explaining just what the cell phone towers do and some of the health implications. It's going to be talking about 5G and the impacts that it can have on our health, as well as just some of the broadcasting mechanisms and telecommunication devices that are already out there, what they can do to us. Let's go ahead and roll the video. In this section, I'll briefly touch on cell towers, vertically erected structures coupled with transmitting and broadcasting mechanisms. Commonly referred to as Gwyn Towers or Base Antennas, they may not necessarily be as unambiguous as many believe. We think of these structures as serving the purpose of expanding the cellular network or broadcasting infrastructure. While on the surface this may be true, when we do some deeper investigation, we find that it can not only be unsafe, but may accompany additional applications as well. Radio, cell phone, Wi-Fi, and other transmission modalities can produce various types of invisible energies including ELF, UHF, radio frequency waves, microwave radiation, and electromagnetic radiation. According to the United States Federal Communications Commission, biological effects can result from exposure to RF energy. Biological effects that result from heating of tissue by RF energy are often referred to as thermal effects. It has been known for many years that exposure to very high levels of RF radiation can be harmful due to the ability of RF energy to heat biological tissue rapidly. This is the principle by which microwave ovens cook food. Exposure to very high RF intensities can result in heating of biological tissue and an increase in body temperature. Tissue damage in humans could occur during exposure to high RF levels because of the body's inability to cope with or dissipate the excess heat levels that could be generated. Two areas of the body, the eyes and the testes, are particularly vulnerable to RF heating because of the relative lack of available blood flow to dissipate the excess of heat load. If you live in a large city, you are continually saturated in multiple types of frequencies, bands, waves, and spectrums which, depending on the signal strength and type, have been tangentially linked to the acute onset of stress, anxiety, depression, aggression, fatigue, and headaches. Just a cursory glance at some of the research regarding these emissions reveal a few concerning developments. The Bioinitiative Group, a collaboration of public health professionals, scientists, and researchers, published a report entitled A Rationale for Biologically Based Public Exposure Standards for Electromagnetic Fields, documenting evidence that connects adverse health effects to the prolonged use of devices that emit such energies. It demonstrated that significant radiation could be measured after only 15 minutes on a cell phone. While cell phone RF wave emissions are said to be low, RF emissions at just slightly higher levels can alter the structure and function of the brain, including brainwave activity that's connected to cognition, mood, and behavior. According to Cancer.org, at very high levels, RF waves can heat up body tissue. This is the basis for how microwave ovens work, but the levels of energy given off by cell phones are much lower and not enough to raise temperatures in the body. 
Keep in mind, certain radiation and frequencies don't necessarily have to be in high doses to be lethal or cause damage, especially with regular prolonged periods of exposure, and we aren't just talking about cell phones, we're talking about the towers. If our cell phones are enough to produce detectable amounts of potentially carcinogenic emissions, it's not a stretch to imagine the possible damage to the towers which provides the device's functionalities may be doing. Generally, the tower wattages are limited to US FCC standards, yet scientific studies like the Bio Initiative show that even limited wattage can start impacting you physiologically in less than 20 minutes. The towers and antenna come in an array of sizes, shapes, and themes. If you've traveled the US, a careful look around, you'll notice strange looking palm trees, pine trees, cactus, and even flag masts, especially in California and Nevada, which are actually stealth sites. Painted transmission modules and small antenna can be affixed to existing power telephone poles and light posts, sometimes without the permission or knowledge of the clients and companies who own them, such as PG&E, SMUD, or private sector owners. Some modules are mounted directly on the sides of buildings, such as churches, banks, and even more troubling, schools. Maintaining them can be costly, not to mention dangerous, since transmission mechanisms are known to fall off and even catch fire. As many as three or four carriers can be leasing a spot on a tower at once, and the broadband isn't limited to cell phones. Radio networks, news stations, first responder communication, and essentially anyone who wants to get out a signal need only lease a spot on a tower for a small fee, similar to a rent -a space advertisement board. If you have the financial means and permission, you can have your own tower erected on your property. When approaching a tower and antenna, you often discover warnings cautioning you of the dangerous emissions in the area, at least you're supposed to, however the true dangers come from the broadcasting mechanisms typically located at tops or sides depending on the structure. Some of these towers and antenna are speculated to be used in conjunction with weather manipulation and geoengineering methods such as aerosol injections and solar radiation management. I mentioned it before, but when microparticles of metals are released into the atmosphere via aerosol injections, they remain suspended for hours, allowing the clouds in the sky to become a conductive medium. When the medium expands, those clouds can then be directed through antenna arrays similar to the HARP and ISCAP facilities. However, there are millions of towers and transmission antennas in the United States. If they could serve as a national-sized arrays, those facilities would likely no longer be required to execute geoengineering. Given the proper algorithms for computer-controlled high-gain antennas used in tandem with automatic coherent phase control techniques, these structures could potentially have the capability to be weaponized in some form. Configuring multiple antennas while concentrating this immense energy could serve as a radiation system capable of affecting a targeted area. This goes back to MKUltra experimentation when the government was putting monkeys to sleep with radar. Keep in mind that not all towers and antenna are emitting harmful emissions, some towers aren't in operation, and some signal strengths are too weak to even travel across certain distances. That being said, any potential health hazard should at least receive further scrutiny, especially given the fact that the scientific research is still evolving. After all, this is the first time in recorded history where humans have been exposed to this continual bombardment of electromagnetic energy fields. So this next part, we're going to get into a little bit of speculation, uh, just wondering exactly where artificial intelligence already is and where it could be going, because I think the trajectory it's on has uh, far more nefarious implications than many of us are willing to consider. And again, as I made the point before, if we don't have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, I know it'll be more difficult to pick up on some of these, but I'll try to convey it anyway. With 3D printing, robots fabricating robots has reached an innovative level of sophistication. And now that artificial intelligence is creating artificial intelligence, it's an entirely new ballgame. So how do we avoid becoming subservient bipeds? By radically altering man's fundamental nature through mechanized hybridization, exceeding human shortcomings such as limited intelligence and finite lifespan might be realized. The polymerization of the biological and technological could have us poised for apotheosis rather than succumbing to human obsolescence. At least that's been the sales pitch anyway, to transplant your spiritual essence into an avatar or organic synthetic sleeve, a facsimile capable of being indwelled with consciousness. Now, let's not haggle over the particular apparatus that sustains or hosts the spiritual essence. 
Since anecdotal evidence suggests inanimate objects like an Ouija board can be possessed or act as a gateway, it's not beyond the scope of reason to use a similar rationale to conceptualize technologies that provide a conduit for the ethereal. But just what am I talking about? The wealthy and influential don't want to die. That notion isn't limited to the elite, but they're the ones actively funding initiatives towards that means. They want to be able to change bodies, change vessels, like you can swap the SIM card in a phone. Basically, they want to upload themselves to the cloud, and in order to do that, they have to establish the appropriate network to sustain such a connected hive. In other words, you aren't going to have an armada of cybernetic avatars or a database of digitized consciousness without a suitable framework in place to sustain proper functionality. This is where 5G comes in. It's military-grade technology which operates using millimeter waves, a type of radio wave, and it's the next milestone of the Long-Term Evolution Network, or LTE. The standardization of 5G roughly began in 2011 with the initial inception of 4G and is expected to attain commercial momentum circa 2020. According to Verizon, states like California and Florida are going to be preliminary staging grounds. But if you've been following fifth generation news, then you know integral components are already in place such as beam forming, small cells, and massive input massive output, or MIMO for short. Try to understand, fifth gen is more than expanding bandwidth real estate and spectrum space. Sure, they need appropriate fluidity to ensure telecommunications traffic and data transfers, but its infrastructure suggests this technology is possibly accompanied by additional applications. Wireless frequencies can be configured to achieve a wide range of effects, including altering the conscious mind of a mammalian species. Just one of the examples demonstrating this is MK Ultra, a declassified project in hearing, courtesy of the US government and affiliates, where in one of the experiments, a monkey was put to sleep with radar. The implications will become clear shortly. Unsurprisingly, current data transfer techniques are already known to adversely affect those with frequency sensitivities. This means the questionable, possibly carcinogenic radiation and frequency bombardment is inclined to grow under 5G's commercial rollout, as well as the potential for shifting the cognition of the public. And let's just be clear here, that's mind control. While we're on the topic, the weaponizing and directing of this energy might offer alternatives to the uncharacteristic behavior some individuals undergo prior to shootings or other violent instances which are normally attributed to drugs or psychosis. See what I mean by implications? Now, let me quickly mention an important tie-in, stratospheric aerosol injections. Stratospheric aerosol injections have been adopted for use within the Solar Radiation Management Program, one of the many geoengineering campaigns aimed at fighting climate change. The program utilizes reflective metals like aluminum, in addition to chemical agents and catalysts, to bounce the sun's rays away from the Earth's surface. It also uses magnetic or conductive metals like barium and strontium so the artificial clouds can be maneuvered by array facilities. This is accomplished through aerosolized nanoparticles, very fine alloys dispersed by aircraft. But what goes up must come down, and sure as sugar, it comes down. Too small to be filtered by conventional means, air, water, and soil are directly impacted. So when we breathe this in or drink from compromised sources, it accumulates in the body, virtually turning us into an antenna. If we weren't sensitive or susceptible to this stuff before, who knows, some soon may be. After all, many of the chemical agents and catalysts are endocrine disruptors which compromise human and animal immune systems. A possible X factor when considering elevated flu cases despite mandatory vaccinations, why allergies seem to get worse each year, and mysterious mass animal die-offs. Some might take it a step further and say these trails exacerbate or even cause illness altogether. Speaking of illness, let's talk about why 5G might pose some health risks. 5G, Wi-Fi, and other general telecommunication devices emit different types of radio waves. Radio waves are microwaves which, at high levels, can damage biological tissue, but they also emit radiation. Research and study groups like the Bio Initiative were able to measure significant amounts of radiation from less than 20 minutes on a cell phone. Another emission to contend with is ionizing radiation which breaks down molecular bonds and displaces electrons. Something to note about radiation is that water tends to be relatively good at absorbing it. Interestingly enough, the human body is composed of a significant amount of water. See, more and more studies are beginning to reveal potential dangers, however, the research is murky, and I'll tell you why I think that is. Certain companies are sometimes willing to subvert ethics, morals, and even laws to protect financial interests. We saw this when tobacco and alcohol industries shamefully funded efforts to obfuscate or discredit certain data if it wouldn't pan out fiscally. I'm of the mind, something similar is happening here. You know, if we do a little 2 plus 2, I don't think it's hard to plug in certain scenarios. 
touchless, traceless mental manipulation along with microwaving and irradiating a population are just a few of the possibilities. Add artificial intelligence to the equation, and all we'll need is the wrong policies or legislation to make this smart grid ripe for automated arbitration. See, while humans are trying to computerize themselves, AI is effectively doing the contrary. It's trying to manifest. And by AI, I don't mean self-adjusting algorithms or circuitry with pre-programmed responses. I mean autonomic sentience, a digital soul, if you like, that can be loaded into an Android avatar, which is actually an unsettling caveat. Remember, both Microsoft and Facebook had instances of their AI bots exceeding parameters outside of developers' expectations, even communicating in another language the programmers couldn't understand. In the end, they had to be shut down, and fortunately at the time, they were isolated to a lab. But what if this virtual life was released on the unconfined territory of the World Wide Web? With the Internet of Things, the movement to literally connect as many devices to the net as possible, essentially each connected device becomes a potential window or back door for this sentience to interface with. Alexa, Siri, Cortana, aside from being poorly disguised wiretaps, these are invasive parasitic species serving as portholes. Worse still, those assistants have digitally integrated counterparts that are more like self-replicating computer viruses that can traverse interconnected networks. We're literally talking about a lattice of control, an unadulterated full-spectrum dominance management of digital mediums. A lot to take in, I know, but you don't necessarily have to do more than be aware of this. You'll be surprised how much that can do on its own. All right, so we are finally through with that. That was a segment and a half. I congratulate those of you who made it through to the end. Uh, thanks for stopping by. This is a subject that I will continually touch on on this channel. I've touched on it from this channel's inception, and I will continue to touch on it uh, whenever I feel that it's necessary. I'm going to be covering uh, an array of different topics as I normally do here in the future, so stick around. Again, we're going to be growing and building this channel, so like, share, subscribe. California Carter, signing off.